Hey guys, this is KingBots. This was a brief demo video of how I was able to implement illuminated smoke into the main blast furnace of the Titan project that I've been working on for quite some time now. Uh, there's a lot to be said about this project in general, to say the least, but this video is focusing particularly on the blast furnace features, so we're going to have to do a lot of editing to try to keep it brief, and I'll be jumping around a good bit. It's, it's really hard to put all this in a nutshell, so bear with me. A lot of people have been following the progress on this project since I started it a while back, but for those of you not too familiar with this piece, it's a new character, a transforming steel mill titan based on the Generations Metroplex figure. A little over a year ago, this concept was proposed by Monty, a friend of mine on Facebook. He wanted an old abandoned steel mill that turns into a new original character, a new evil titan that he has named Ogun Abyss which is modeled after the African God of Iron and War. I'm basing this project on the old uh, Bethlehem steel mill in Pennsylvania that ran strong for well over 150 years and finally shut down around 2003. They went bankrupt in 2001, new company took over in 2003, and that was the end of Bethlehem. Um, I had to make some aggressive mods to this figure to get the results that I wanted. had to reinforce almost all the joints to support the added weight. It's been a challenge to say the least, but uh, overall I'm pretty satisfied with how everything's turned out so far. Um, I kind of hit the wall when it came time to get the smoke in there, but I was hell bent on making it work, so after some trial and error it's finally starting to come together nicely. Uh, I decided to go with a detachable battery operated miniature fog generator. The reason for this was the weight of the furnace cannon on that left arm. The blast furnace in mill mode uh, becomes the furnace cannon in robot mode. Uh, the sheer weight of the cannon was already a bit much for the uh, pivoting shoulder. I didn't want to push it so um, I mean I probably could have with some major restructuring of that shoulder but it really wasn't necessary so I went with an exterior setup that can be easily installed or removed in just a few seconds so I'm not going to get into a lot of detail how a blast furnace works but it's basically the heart of the system in a meltdown process. The raw materials uh, go up a conveyor up into the top of the furnace. The raw oil then filters down and converts to molten iron that's extracted from a, the bottom of it and, and it's poured and cooled and shipped out. All right, so that's enough of the formalities. And now I'll show Neodymium, you. Neodymium uh, rare earth magnets on the inside and outside of this, this bracket and it telescopes up for steel mill so machines that you, that you get. Um, even the smaller ones were plug in and I ended up finding this, uh, I dug around in the internet a little bit and I found this little guy um, on a site called uh, zerotoys.net but this thing is actually not, it's actually not really a toy, it's actually a, a tool that you use out in the field to detect air draft, uh, leaks of uh, I believe four AA batteries but um, same principle, you got a uh, heated element it's, it was small enough to blend in with the, uh, the mill mode. What it does is this little heated element, once it, you, you hold the trigger, this little light comes on. And the, let me see if I can get in, get in the camera there. The little light comes on. You hold the trigger, wait about six to nine seconds, and you watch the, the heated element there in the window. You can see it already starting to smoke a little bit. Um, you'll see the element turn red and once it's red then it's pretty much good to go then you hit this then you pull the trigger the first detent is to turn the light on to let you know that the element is heating and it's ready it's it's good to go now you squeeze a little bit more you hear like the the crackling it's actually pretty powerful because I've got about four feet of line let me get this in, in sight here I've got this line run through half of the arm here and this is how it did it. I've got some clear tube here run through run through the arm it goes to connects to a um, aluminum nipple. The line actually you can detach this it sticks out about a uh, maybe three quarters to an inch once the uh, the blast furnace slides over and screws on and then I've got about four feet of this which kind of wraps around the back of the uh, has an arm snap mode. together like that. Let's see if I can get this in a, centered on a camera. And that's that. This is just some uh, clear tubing. 
that you can pretty much get anywhere. I get it at the hardware store. I've got the uh, the washers on the end, or to keep the the line centered in the, uh, the in this uh, this main this green entire stack, stack slides over this, uh, screws in. It mounts. When you look down to through it. the top, this is where I've got the uh, the LED mounted um, for the uh, illumination for when the smoke comes out, and it's actually mounted on a uh, on a small baffle in there so that when the smoke comes out it's not just a thin stream it, it kind of dissipates and uh, spreads it out right. and makes it I got half the lights off so the smoke shows up a little bit better um, the darker it is the better it looks I got the LED okay so on. you turn on the fan on this little guy get that going pull the trigger light comes on Watch the element. Wait for heat up. It's already starting to go at it. And there it goes. That didn't even take the full 10 seconds. It heated up pretty fast, actually. And you can do it in pulses because it's already hot at this point. So you can pull this trigger to the second detent as many times as you want. This, uh, this thing is pretty powerful for its size because it's going through four feet of tubing to, to get the smoke going. And it wasn't really designed for that. You can hear the, the uh, fog juice crackling as it's, it's being cooked by the element. But that's how it works. That's how a fog machine works, so it's normal. I'm going to let off on the trigger. Let the residual pressure get out of there. And here we go again. Here comes another pulse. I know it takes about a second for the smoke to pass through that four feet of tube before it comes out. So it's, it actually travels pretty fast. It's pretty effective. Nice pl thick plume of smoke coming out there. Looks really cool. The darker it is, the better it looks. Every now and then it'll kind of bellow out like it's doing now and it'll kind of hang around here at the uh, the top of this stack at the tower and it'll collect so in this little it's uh, a fairly easy setup but if it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get it going uh, depending on your your um, particular situation this was um, because this stack was totally scratch built I was um, I didn't know what to expect you know with the, with the strength of this thing but it actually ended up working out really well. If you got any questions about how to run this thing, um, functionality, cost, uh, where to get it, I think the website was Zero Toys. That actually worked that I was able to implement into this project to uh, send it over the edge. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you guys later.